to Celestial Invitational Day number three. I'm D2, and today I'm joined by the super talented Kyle D from Temple Storm. Now, before we get started, I do want to thank Temple Storm for allowing us to uh, stream on their channel to get this out to as many people as possible. And thanks to uh, Team Celestial itself for letting us cast this in English. Today we have a super interesting group with Kalento, Tom60229. That's a rematch of the finals of the PAX Prime uh, in the summer, as well as Shadowy and Chao Shen, a cult Chinese hero. What do you think about this group, Kaldi? It's it's very interesting. Uh, Tom obviously been on an absolute tear recently. Did really well at Ashes Rock. Beat Colanto 4-3 uh, last time around in the finals there. So he's been doing extremely well. He was kind of known as, as a mediocre player. One one of the I, I guess stronger Asians that came over to the European uh, tournament circuit. But then he just turned things up and started winning tournament after tournament and getting top three, top four again and again. Uh, Colento has been kind of up and down. I mean, Colento is Colento. He's always, always good. But he had a, a streak where he was winning maybe two, three tournaments a month. But I feel like recently he's just been doing okay for Colento standard, which is still really good. But it's not, you know, God like Colento that was winning every tournament a few months ago. Yeah, definitely. Even Kalento on a bad streak is still a very impressive player. Uh, I want to remind everyone that we are piggybacking on the Chinese stream, so that's why you see uh, the different Chinese casters on the screen rather than Kaldi and me. And uh, you, we do see the match uh, order there on the screen going to be Kalento versus Shadowy first, then Tom60229 versus Chaoshin after that. And uh, if you weren't familiar with the tournament, haven't been keeping up the past couple days, what they do is a full round robin, no GSL style. And the reason why it's a full round robin is so that the players get to play all nine decks today. So they, everyone plays three matches and they have to use three different classes for every single match that they play. It's super cool. You get to see all the uh, decks out there, even Shaman, even some of the lesser play decks and it leads to some really cool outcomes like when Firebat brought some uh, just off the wall decks a couple days ago like the uh, Mill Rogue, like the Freeze Priest quote unquote, like uh, you know, uh, Freeze Mage with no Antonidas and no uh, Alex Straza and he was able to go 3-0 and so lots of cool things that we get to see today. Um, and uh, one thing, yeah, like you mentioned, Kalento being in this group is really cool, especially for the Chinese audience. Uh, the Chinese, basically uh, Chinese, as we see uh, Kalento on the screen right there, part of Cloud9. And uh, basically, Chinese players love Kalento, as we see his, his uh, decks on the screen there. I guess I'll go over uh, China's love of Kalento in a couple seconds after we go over his decks. He's playing Rogue, Shaman, and Mage. Uh, the Rogue looks like it's a pretty standard... Uh, oh, oh, no, just kidding. There, is, there are Raptors in there. And, uh, huh. This seems is... semi-standard, yeah. There are a lot of Oil Rogue you know, capabilities. So it seems mixed Raptor and Oil Rogue as in the Raptor... Rogue tends to go full out with eggs, with loot holders, but this is only including, I mean, there's two setters, there's going to be a, a, a Thalnos, but not that much. So I, I'm not sure I like this too much, but, but I mean, the Raptor still is a 3-4 in its own right without having any Death Settle synergies. So we have the Temple Mates on top of that, and then we have the Acro Shaman, which has been doing really well. Luffy getting really high with that, with that on, on the end of the ladder, but he didn't play Mech version, and we are talking about this in Temple Storm, uh, and it seems to be a, a overload version with Feral Spirits that just has um, every top deck. Every top deck is strong generally, but yeah, uh, yeah. the Mac version just has an automatically strong start. Now we have Shadowy here with the standard. It seems to be kind of standard uh, double combo druid, almost rampy with a uh, one inch the war. Then we have a Milrogue. Yeah, Milrogue is going to be wow. really interesting to see. That's really cool. The second time we've seen this uh, this tournament, obviously Firebat being the first person to show that, and also the Seeker Paladin as well. So really excited to see this. Uh, as you saw on the screen there, Shadowy does not have a team. Uh, when I talked to uh, Celestial's manager, he basically compared him to uh, Shadowstorm, uh, or sorry, Silent Storm. I'm getting people mixed up. Ooh. Silent Storm uh, before ESL. Basically, you know, does well in the you know, online tournaments. You know, tries to qualify for things and uh, did a good job coming here, getting through the qualifier to get here. Uh, the people in his bracket uh, in the qualifier up until this point were uh, Chinese pros like Zoro Zuiwo and China YLD. So go to him to get here. I think this is his first big tournament. So uh, good luck to him as he tries to get out of this pretty stacked group. 
Uh, back to uh, Kalento and China's love for him. They they call him K God. They basically worship worship uh, everything that he does. Uh, just like you know some Western fans do as well, calling him God Lento. So uh, interesting to see uh, you know how uh, how he, his reception is uh, for the Chinese fans and how he does today. Absolutely. Here, um, I think one important thing is we had E versus China. The most brutal qualifiers where we had one person going through and there was a best of three single elimination uh, uh, tournament for each, each spot essentially. Uh, I'm obviously very salty about that because I got top four but didn't make it make the cut there. But yeah, Colento ended up being the only person invited from Europe to the tournament. And that's just because the Chinese fans love him. He ended up going super far in the tournament, didn't end up winning but he just yeah, has proved himself so so often here. I think it's going to be a very interesting combination because we have the Chinese players and the Chinese players have uh, more time, I feel, because there's not as many uh, huge tournaments. If we look at Xiaoyu, for example, he isn't playing uh, a 10K event, you know, mm-hmm. every other day here like Colento. So Xiaoyu will have a lot more time, I feel, to study Colento and study Tom and, and really prepare better. So I'm expecting better preparation from Chaosin and Shadowy, but I'm expecting more experience and uh, I guess clarity from Colento and Tom. I'm not expecting him to get, get nervous. That may be something the Shadowy and Chaosin are dealing with. So it'll be an interesting scenario here. Yeah, definitely. Really interesting to see this match. I mean, obviously, like you say, Shadow Shadowy probably has more time to study up on Clento, but at the same time, you know, Clento is going to be having basically zero nerves. He's been in the spotlight so many times, and uh, look for him to be playing to the uh, to his uh, fullest potential. Whereas Shadowy, maybe you know, he might not show his best here because those nerves might come into play. You never know. And uh, just going over the group one more time, this is absolutely an amazing day for Chinese fans um, in, ge- uh, in particular because of Kalento, obviously, and because of Chao Shen. He is that uh, cult hero, like I said. I'll explain that story later when he goes against Tom60229 later in the day. But um, I assume we're getting ready for this particular match. What do you think about this match, uh, these matchups in particular, speaking of the decks? It's going to be an oil rogue with the, uh, the Raptor in there and the... The kind of more Raynad, uh, cut tilted, you know, uh, mech shaman or the aggro shaman, not not more Luffy focused. Uh, that you know, that being the more overload focused, and then also mm-hmm. the uh, Temple Mage versus that combo druid with the one ancient of war, the mill rogue, and the seeker paladin. Who do you like here as uh, the favorite? Just for looking at these decks, I think Colento is going to be a strong favorite just based on the decks. If this was player A versus player B, I'd give player A which in this case is called a huge edge. And I want to t- talk about that. How you beat Agro, uh, Secret Paladin is you get a better start and you go for their face. And when they have to start playing defensive, you aren't proccing the secrets and, and they just get into some trouble. That's why, uh, yeah, I feel like the Agro Shaman will be good against that. I feel like another, another counter to the Paladin is Rogue because you have... Uh, you have the uh, Phantom Flash for the Master, you have a lot of removal, so I feel like Rogue will be strong against the Paladin as well, and Tempo Mage are probably losing against the Paladin. We talk about Mill Rogue. Mill Rogue is really bad against decks that are kind of combo-y, that can play many uh, cheap spells for a lot of value uh, in the turn, so what type of decks would those be? That would be, uh, f- I guess, Rogue, <laughs> I guess... Agro Shaman and I guess Tempo Mage. So I feel like if Shadowy um, is going to win this match, the key will be getting a win with that Rogue. And if we look at the Druid as well, I mean, Druid versus Tempo Mage is slightly favored for the Tempo Mage. Druid versus Agro Shaman is just favored for the Agro Shaman. And Druid versus Rogue, people are talking about that being a 55 for the Rogue. But a close matchup nonetheless, because the Rogue has a very easy way to deal with the uh, Tarnassus, which Shadowy is actually only running one of. Yeah, exactly. And uh, looking at those statistics, I mean, Monk obviously compiled a lot of those uh, back before, I think even before uh, TGT came out. Uh, and, you know, that that matchup hasn't changed too much other than Darnassus. And uh, despite what a lot of pros like to say about, you know, favoring Rogue, it actually favored Druid statistically, but obviously, you know, it's kind of skewed by uh, certain whoever pilots those particular decks. Uh, going back to that Mill Rogue, I mean, Firebat did a really good job uh, piloting it and getting a win in his first game with it against Druid, but uh, we interviewed him after, and he mentioned in particular that if you 
it's a good matchup if your opponent doesn't know how to play that particular matchup. And uh, he said that what you do is you want to keep the um, the double combo, and all you have to do is play one minion, get the double combo off, and just win the game. Obviously, we're not going to be seeing the Milro go against Drew at this match, but it'll be interesting to see if Kalento knows how to play against the, the Mill Rogue. And uh, like you say, it might be pretty easy for him to do so because he's going to have so many uh, cheap things to play in that Mage and that Shaman. Uh, kind of in the Rogue too, however, sometimes uh, if you draw too many cards with Rogue, uh, you can run out of options only being able to, you know, especially if you have things like Azure Drake and Sprint stuck in your hand that you basically can't use anymore. But uh, enough about that, we're finally into that first game. It's going to be Tempo Mage versus Druid, and uh, this is a pretty good matchup for the Mage. Absolutely, but a, a big thing is that the Mage doesn't have the coin, and coin is so critical in this matchup. There's also no mana worm, and having a mana worm is, is compared to having wild growth. It's that strong and big of a difference here, but innovate wild growth, Lothep and Shred. I think keeping Lothep is, is brave. It's not, but I mean, I would have maybe thought about throwing away the Lothep and getting a Shade, because then you can coin out and have a stronger curve, but this is not bad at all. Um, yeah, do you well, think, I like, I, I think I like maybe it. he, uh, I think maybe that was post-Mulligan, what they showed on the screen there, uh, or am I mistaken? Oh yeah, he, he kept he kept three three of his cards and, and got a new one for right, the right. Through the Claw, but I really like it, he's probably going to go for, I think, Through the Claw now, uh, but yeah, Colento, I mean, the setter is decent, he has a two-drop, so this is all right, but it's not the best by any means. There's no mass scientist, there's no playmaker. So I think this is going to be even favored here for the Druid. But now we look at any tough decks to shade here on turn two. What a draw. Uh, but if to go back a bit, we're talking about the uh, the Oil Rogue versus uh, Druid. And that'd be statistically better for the Druid. I think an important thing is the players that play Rogue... Uh, Generally, players that play Rogue don't do as well as Druid because Druid is much simpler to play. Mm -hmm. So I think that's it's noteworthy. But the players that actually are bringing Rogues to top tournaments tend to do better against Druids uh, with, with their Rogue. So I think, yeah, with the, for an average player, the mm -hmm. Druid does better. But for the top player, the Rogue does slightly better. Mm -hmm. uh, but here, yeah, and interestingly, he charges the Druid with the Claw. Yeah, I think had, Taunt may have been okay. Yeah, he had a lot of options there. I think he was a bit afraid of the three mana Fireball coming out to kill his Drew of the Claw. And uh, that would have been a pretty big tempo swing, would have taken some damage there. And this does force the ping out. So now he has first play, which is kind of nice. You're getting, you know, a Shredder out against nothing from the main. That feels pretty good as the Druid. So uh, in the end, can't really fault him too much. You know, just playing it a bit safe. Could have also gone for the low hip to shut down any sort of, you know, tempo play from that Source's Apprentice. And, uh, yeah, just so many things going well for Shadowy. He, I mean, he has his, you know, quote-unquote broken start, right? Every class needs to have some sort of broken start to compete in today's super competitive, you know, metagame. And uh, Clento just had an okay start, didn't have the broken start. Uh, Shadowy got that broken start, and, uh, you know, now he's pretty far ahead, I would say. Absolutely here. Um, what strikes me as a bit weird is, is that, I mean, Shadowy's bringing Paladin and Druid to, I guess, with... I would, uh, classify them as tier one classes and then he brings the mill rock on top of that so to me this looks like two really strong decks and one really weak deck mm -hmm. and for conquest that isn't generally how you want to um, go about things but yeah he definitely has the strongest classes here for game number one colento thinking a long time i guess he's thinking a weighing of the options between sweater and, and uh, apprentice secret i think sweater is the correct play here I yeah. guess mainly he's afraid of the keeper. Now we have Lothep coming down. It's really, really strong. And, and going face. We really like going face here. Yeah, exactly. You don't really need to trade for the Shredder if you're not in any sort of trouble. Basically, the person defending has to make that trade. And uh, so good on Shadow 8, recognizing that. Um, kind of liking his play so far, you know, making some decent plays, especially for someone uh, who is his first time in this big environment. Uh, have a decision here between the Flame Cannon, Arcane Intellect, and Pyroblast. Goes for the Flame Cannon. Nice uh, little tempo card there, can uh, take out a minion, most likely. And uh, Clento kind of hanging in there, but you really want to be, you know, getting the edge on the Druid uh, if you want to be finishing this game out. Otherwise, Druid just has so much damage potential. Oh yeah, I mean, Colento is simply just behind here. Um, it was interesting to see what he's going to do this turn. I think definitely his idea behind not killing the sweater is because he has Sylvanas, because uh, Shadow has Sylvanas. So Shadow definitely wants to just assure that he gets something 
from the death rattle. Uh, I'm clicking at shade and wrath. Yeah, taking out, of, the, taking out a yeah. five drop. Uh, I mean, obviously he gets a spell out of that does Kalento, but uh, taking that guy out feels pretty good. You know, pretty pretty nice to get rid of a six attack minion with just a two mana spell, and you develop a shade, which is uh, pretty powerful in itself. I kind of like this play. Playing the Savonis, maybe you have maybe your five five trades into the six three. So I mean, in the end, he's keeping the pressure up, which is pretty good. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, I think it, it was a tough call. I mean, he had so much health, and if, is he gonna play Sylvanas later when the Shredder is maybe? able to trade because he would have had something out of the Sylvanas, absolutely, in that case. Now, Kalento is not going to wait any longer, go for the Flame Cannon, and miss is completely, ah. Oh, yeah, in particular, the, yeah, that Flame Waker, just two to the face, that's so bad for him. Uh, the Flame Cannon, I mean, no matter what it hit, it was going to get something, you know, pretty valuable there, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously getting the card or getting the minion with the least health doesn't feel too good. And now he's just going to have to roll the dice and hope that this flame uh, this flame maker hits. Nope, hits the face Ooh. and loathe him. Complete whip on the side of Kalento. And uh, Shadowy, he doesn't show it, but he's got to be feeling pretty happy about that. I guess one thing that kind of surprises me is that Kalento doesn't have the sphere in the middle. Now, in case of the uh, flame tongue totem or the Daiwa of Alpha. So... Mm. That's not a mistake we see from, from Colento all the time. I think, you know, when people are casting Colento, they assume, oh, he's, he's just... He has some, you know, different angle on this play. He must be thinking about it and, and, and uh, make, be making the right, right call, but... Yeah, having the, Colento's yeah. capable of making misplays, too. Um, the thing about Colento, uh, I've noticed, is that uh, he... He can make misplays here and there, but he is one of the players, though, who can make absolutely brilliant plays that, you know, few players in the world can see. That's what kind of sets him apart uh, in these kinds of matches. But, uh, yeah, I mean, not not infallible, but I would say that this uh, this match isn't, or this particular game isn't really his fault too much. Just uh, uh, a kind of weak draw compared to his opponent. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The only thing I'm talking about is the sweater not being in the middle. Oh, there we go. And he now, he, now, now he has the sweater in the middle, so, <laughs> yeah, absolutely here. Uh Learning from his mistakes, I guess, here. The fireball being really strong. I wonder if he's facing the smith, I think. Mm. I guess it's, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, so after, you know, Shadowy being ahead the entire time, all of a sudden, you know, Kalento showing the power of the Tempo Mage, and uh, Shadow is even at 21 health, so, I mean, Kalento can maybe p uh, potentially make something happen here if he uh, can continue this. However, this Sylvanas is pretty difficult to deal with and uh, Shadowy, Shadowy is threatening lethal if that sticks on the board. Oh yeah, I would've kind of wanted to see how this would have gone if he'd just gone for the Sylvanas the last turn, how oh, this game would have unfolded. But he, Shadowy has the combo now and so he would probably be able to, able to clear whatever Colanto puts onto the board Gonna be looking at probably a trade now before Asher Drake, I would have thought, or is he just gonna go face? That may be a viable play as well. Yeah, I mean, I know it's just so difficult for Clento right now, right? Because if he trades, he gives his opponent the two drop coming from that Paladin Shredder, and um, you know that just by itself would be lethal for Shadowy. Now Shadowy has to kind of determine what that secret is. Because if he starts off with the Force of Nature and his Counterspell, it's absolutely devastating. He has almost nothing else to do. So it looks like he's going to just brave it and, uh, yeah, going to be rewarded for his bravery. It's going to give him the game that is not Ice Block. And Shadowy is going to take a 1-0 lead in this series. And uh, his Druid is cleared. Just... Really solid draw from his part of view. Uh, got the Innovate, had the Lothab, had the Sweater, had the Wild Growth. Just kind of had everything he, he needed to win this game here. Colanto getting really rough uh, Flame Maker hits, rough Flame Cannon hits. Uh, so it's kind of hard for, to argue that Colanto, you know, played worse. I, I saw only one misplay from Colanto and none from. Uh, not really from uh, Shadowy here, so w well done to him. He's one over. Yeah. I guess though, I want to talk about the last turn from Colento not fitting into Sylvanas. Now Colento is behind, and when you're behind, the wrong thing to do is just to play middle of the way, because then you probably just stay behind. Mm -hmm. Now this is a term from StarCraft that's, uh, you know, the, the, when when you're behind, you go all in, kind of. Uh, and yeah. that's what I, I definitely think is, is the correct thing to do. And if, you, if you're going if you're behind, you, you shouldn't really be playing around things like 
combo generally. I mean, Kalanto, it was strong for him to go face. He needed to take the risk, and he took the risk of not having combo. And I think he made the right call, even though Shadow did have the combo here. Yeah, I mean, Top you can only top. really play around cards if you're you have you can afford to play around cards, right? Because say if Clento try to play around combo there, uh, what's his play really? His play is to trade both guys in and then play the Ezra Drake and then hope that he has a removal spell for the two drop that his opponent steals, and that's just not a winning play in the end. Uh, if, if your opponent does have combo, you lose anyway, and if he doesn't have combo, then you're basically shooting yourself in the foot by making that play. So in the end, has to take a risk. Uh, didn't pay out for him just because uh, Shadow did have the combo in hand. Now we have a super interesting matchup. Um, I think this is Shadowy's best chance to win with this Mill Rogue because, uh, like you mentioned, the Mage and the Shaman just has so many cheap cards to be able to uh, feel them and uh, just, you know, basically just, you know, throw out the cards in their hand and never be milled and just uh, use them to their full potential. Whereas in this case, you know, Clento, you can see in his hand, he has those double Azure Drakes. Those could be clunky if uh, Shadowy... Uh, is able to start, you know, putting cards into the hand of Kalento. Oh, no question here. Yeah, this is going to be... I mean, there's some potential that he would beat the Shaman, which is a deadly poison uh, on top of it. But I think you're right here. The Cold Light Oracles and the Brand will be very important in this matchup and how he uses the Ganga. But this is still uphill. I think Kalento is favored here. But talk about the last game, though. What I wanted to say is... If I was put in the same situation as Colento, I would have also not killed the Sylvanas. And I think if Colento went back to this game and had the same situation come up tomorrow, I think he also would have, you know, gone gone face instead of killing the Sylvanas there. Right, uh, right. But yeah, now I'm feeling like Phantom Knives is the strong call here. Yeah, Phantom Knives doesn't really have much uh, utility in this matchup, other than killing some uh, apprentices from the Violet Teacher, or, you know, maybe if he's have uh, spell damage, that can work too. Uh, this match is going to be pretty interesting, because it's going to uh, be a match in uh, how quickly can Kalento figure out that Shadowy is indeed Mill Rogue and not your typical Oil Rogue. Uh, Shadowy might have it on his mind that he could be playing against Mill Rogue too. I think that was part of his uh, apprehension in playing that Phantom Knives. Uh, because, uh, well, now Shadowy sees uh, that uh, Unearthed Raptor, so maybe he thinks it could be, you know, Death Rattle Rogue as well. So lots of options here. Typically, I mean, before uh, League of Explorers, it was basically all Oil Rogue all the time. And uh, now Shadowy is kind of wondering what he could be facing. And uh, obviously, Kalento doesn't have a full grasp on what Shadow could be. Shadowy is playing either. Could backstab uh, <laughs> Perf Ganga be possible? I mean, that wouldn't be the worst minion to get, I feel. Um, I think, yeah. I think in this matchup, um, it's probably going to go a while because Shadowy, you know, has so many options in his deck to be able to uh, prevent Kalento from killing him, uh, that being those Vanishes and the Saps, and also just removal in general. So I think Shadowy is going to be played for the long game and doesn't want to get a uh, bad gang up. Wants to get gang up on those Colette Oracles, potentially, uh, you know, Healbot or something like that, but uh, mm -hmm. probably not looking to get the Raptor there. And Shadowy looking really worried here about this Ash Drake. I wonder if he's gonna sap it. <laughs> it kind of seems like uh, something you would do if you're playing Mill Rogue here. Yeah, it could be the it could be the right play here. Um, I mean, and it's like if you're playing, you know, Oil Rogue versus Oil Rogue in the mirror there. Uh, Ezra Drake is actually one of the better minions to sap because of that tempo swing that it provides. So it wouldn't automatically, you know, show to Kalento that Shadow is playing that Mill Rogue. But um, in this case, I wouldn't uh, be too opposed to it. Nothing else really for Shadowy to do here other than, you know, trade his minion in and maybe re-dagger or something. But that feels pretty bad. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I mean, we didn't see a backstab, so I think even... I think this has to be a sap, though. Yeah, I mean... Yeah. I mean it almost is like a kill, right? Because if you if you sap that away, and uh, Kalento really... I mean, he could play it, but then that plays in the Shadowy's hand. And if Kalento figures out later that this is Mill Rogue, then uh, Kalento is not going to want to play it. So this is essentially a kill uh, in a strange way. Yeah, I'd go further and saying it's even stronger than a, uh, a, a kill, because you also mess up your opponent. But it seems like we're having minor lag like, here. Yeah, the Which connection kind of issues the connection issues between uh, the players, especially because they have to both play on the China server, kind of uh, messes with them sometimes, but uh, yeah, we, we get through it. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, even, yeah, I would, I would classify it as, as 
as a kind of staple compared to that. I mean, you know, the battle net uh, spectator mode is always a bit clunky. Uh, I mean, it's just how it how it is. Um, so even if it's EU versus EU or NA versus NA, you still have problems. I feel. Yeah, definitely. So Kalento, um, I don't know if he's starting to recognize if this is uh, indeed Milrog or not, but uh, he did himself a huge favor here by uh, playing the prep Eviscerate, and now he is able to, you know, get some cards out of hand for any potential mill in the future. Shadowy, however, hasn't picked up anything. A huge draw there would have been that Cold Light Oracle, but uh, unable to draw it in this instance. Yeah, I mean, with Bran, it's kind of crazy how many cards you're drawing then. Also, perhaps gang up that, but it's not going to come down again. I think it has to be. Yeah, what about the <laughs> Sap and Big Game Hunter? Just Temple Big Game Hunter. Uh, because Shadowy, I mean, sometimes you see Dr. Boom in Rogue decks, but uh, I mean, I don't think I would suspect Kalento would be playing any uh, Dr. Booms in his deck. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's possible though. Not likely, I'd say. Uh, maybe Shadowy. Does one take or take the risk? I mean, the big hunter is going to die so so easily. Uh, mm. But I mean, it would maybe be a bit of a bluff because if I saw a big hunter, I would even wouldn't necessarily expect it to be a, a, a milbrook. He's gonna keep the weapon. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Kind of I felt think, like yeah, yeah. yeah. I think he's wasn't just in kind of hoping. Yeah. He's just kind of hoping that he draws into something. And at this point, he's he's kind of due, right? <laughs> so maybe that could be the case. Uh, as far as Colento is concerned. Um, Kind of a clunky hand. He kind of wishes he had 7 mana here to be able to go uh, with the Shredder and SI7 agent. As it stands, um, I mean, killing this is kind of clunky. And uh, so it looks like he's just going to go with the Sap. Uh, Kalento realizing he doesn't have anything that the BGH just kills anyway, so just getting the card out of hand. As we see the graphic for the Cold Light Oracle on the screen. Vanish hits Shadowy's hand and uh, don't want to be vanishing this. <laughs> This just won't cut it, yeah. This is, you know, 50% of the games we just don't draw the Cold Light Oracle, and then you're just in a lot of trouble. I mean, think about it, if you had the Cold Light Oracle, you could have messed Colanto up, but Colanto seems to definitely recognize that this is Milrogue, and he is playing accordingly, throwing out as many cards as he possibly can each turn. Yeah, you can definitely see he's starting to catch on a bit, especially when you see two saps in a row. Um... I mean, if you're playing an oil rogue, you can have dead hands, but typically not this dead, right? <laughs> Going through, you know, basically 10 cards and have nothing to play other than, you know, one single SI7 agent. It's pretty unlikely that that would be the case. So, looks like Shadowy has nothing else to do but just to, uh, you know, big game hunter and pass. The good news for Shadowy, even though uh, he has nothing to, he's had nothing to do so far, is he's coming up on turn 8 and hasn't taken any damage thus far. So, that could definitely work in his favor. Um, Lothib might hit the board soon, and that would cause problems for Shadowy, however. Yeah, but I mean, there's possibilities that uh, Shadowy would just gang up the Lothib. Something I've, I've uh, been been doing myself when I've been playing Mill Rogue is, if you face Lothib, you just gang up it. Especially against Rogue, I mean, it's, it's so strong. Now, Shadow Staff will just not cut it. I think, is Vanis even something you may have to look at at this point? Ah, uh, it's just... His hand is completely dead. I don't wouldn't blame him. Yeah, and you're not gonna vanish, vanish still, yeah. You're not gonna vanish anything more than two minions typically from a rogue, so I think it's kind of okay. I mean Shadowy's hand would be perfect if he just had one cold light oracle. You know, he could he could cold light oracle, he could uh prep vanish, or he could he could cold light oracle, gang up prep vanish, that would be absolutely amazing. Even throw in a maybe a shadow step in there as well, or something like that. But uh, looks like it's just gonna be vanished and now Clento knows one hundred percent that this is uh Mill Rogue. Absolutely so I mean he has to load that on top of everything. I feel like even just replaying what he just played last turn may be okay. Now, Final Knives is pretty dead and the double uh, Blade Flurry as well. But like Colinto isn't a commanding lead in this game, but one color Oracle might change everything. He will need to wait a bit, but we see the Death Lord. Okay, that's playable here, I guess, but it would, it would have been a lot stronger with the Vanish. Uh, now, he has the Flurry, but no no oil or no, or no Deadly Poison for the Flurry, so this is just pretty bleak here for Shadowy. I think the Deathlord has to come down though. 
Yeah, and it kind of just shows just how bad Shadowy's draw was, right? I mean, he could have drawn Cold Light, he could have drawn Death Lord, he could have drawn so many other things, but uh, just everything went going wrong for him this game. And, and like you said, just has to probably drop this Death Lord and basically pass. Gang up being the Loth is a possibility, I think. But I, I like the Death Lords more here in this this case. Yeah, getting up the death or the low the, I mean, you take a guaranteed uh, what would that be? Twelve damage right now, and <laughs> from there you're kind of just using that. Uh, you know, you're just you're trying to maybe use that low in the future, and you I mean you can't really even use the low off the next draw anyway. So yeah, just looking really bad for Shadowy, and not only that, but if he does drop this game, then Clento will be uh, able to kind of, you know, make the right mulligans for this deck in the future as well. Glenta looking really disappointed, got the sprint of the top, then gets the prep. Almost to leave here. It's really early in Europe, so that may be a part of it. He looks really, really sleepy at this point now. We have prep. What are we going to see here? Perhaps the Blade Flurry. Interesting, interesting. Makes Going sense. I mean, just, you just want to get cards out of your hand, right? Uh, just don't want any crazy you know, uh, call it Oracle shenanigans, especially with Brand Bronzebeard, you know, double drawing essentially for you. So yeah, it just puts as many as much stuff on the board. Already seen one vanish, so unlikely to be another one. And uh, that's game, I believe. I mean, Shadow can't even draw any cards. So has to be a, has to be a Doomsayer kind of from the uh, Paul Lister. That's the only scenario that I'm seeing that right. can keep him alive, but 10, 10 health is pretty bleak. And then what do you even play in to uh, proc the Eviscerate? Do you, I mean, it's hard to use your face here to take 4 damage, right? So you have to prep the Eviscerate, which feels bad. Even just going for the 1 in 70 Doomsayer is painful for you. Yeah, I mean, Blade 3 might even be something he needs to play. It's, it's just so bleak, though. Gang up doesn't feel like you can throw that away. Prep, you can't really throw that away, I feel. Because when the cooldown hits, you want to be playing prep gang up. Uh, I think Flurry may be what you need to go for. Flurry <laughs> it's just funny how we're, we're analyzing how he's gonna just he's gonna go for the one in seventy, right? It's just, it's so bleak for him. All right, is it a doomsayer? Not a doomsayer. Gonna be the narrow bar web lord, and that is going to be a game well played. Is is thrown out, and Clento takes game number two and evens the series one game to one. No question here. Yeah, I mean Clento had a, a a strong matchup for game number one. Lost it slightly due to a worse draw. It was in a big lead for the matchup here in game number two and took it convincingly. Uh, so Kalento having yeah two strong matchups here in this this series, but still only one one. So Shadow we pulling out some some uh, tricks here uh, now. Yeah, but like you said it's... earlier, you said that you know the rogue was the uh, weak point of Shadowy's lineup, and the fact that Kalento won, I mean, it's arguable what's uh, if he had you know how favored it was for Kalento, but I think uh, it's pretty obvious that that was the the best chance for Shadowy to take a win with that rogue, and the fact that he didn't means that uh, Kalento is in a really good spot to take this series overall. Well, no question. And now, generally, if you're playing Paladin, you wouldn't really keep. Uh, then after you clear against Shaman. That's generally not something you do. Right. So, does he have some information that we don't? I mean, I, I guess uh, maybe you could go. I mean, if you go coin knife juggler, you don't really suspect uh, more than one piece of removal because Shaman obviously has that removal, but you, you wouldn't really keep two. So, maybe you go coin mm -hmm. knife juggler here to uh, contest the tunnel trog. And then once he removes it, you play the second knife juggler, and then from there he can't remove it. And hopefully, you draw into muster for battle, which he has drawn into. So, uh, maybe that's the thought process behind keeping both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the mini bot is definitely stronger, stronger of the two wonders here. But he gets a second frog. Wow. Oh my god, this is just brutal. Now we talk about the third matchup here. I feel like Kalanto is slightly favored, but this is probably the closest it's it's going to be. Uh, so better to face this than the uh, definitely yeah, better to face this than Tempo Mage. Yeah. Uh, definitely. And one thing to point out before we get too far into this game is that everyone, these players want to be winning every single game. There's no, you know, pride or, you know, I have to win with this deck because I brought it because it's Conquest. Sometimes people do that, right? But uh, there's a big difference between losing 3-0 and losing 3-2, as we saw on the first day when uh, Life Coach was able to win a tiebreaker. 
uh, when he lost to Firebat only 3-2 and not 3-0 uh, in that particular match. He was close to losing 3-0, but getting those two wins allowed him to move to the final. So every single game matters. So you, these players definitely want to be bringing the best decks uh, to be able to pick up any wins that they can. Oh well, yeah, just to clarify, I guess, um, so if, if there's going to be a three-way wow. tie for, for uh, 1-2 in that case, uh, there's, it, it, there's no uh, tiebreaker played out. But there is going to be a tiebreaker just based on game score. And if we just talk about the group A, there will be a life coach with a 6 7 score against Blue and Zoro with a 5 7 score. So even though life coach lost to Zoro, he goes through in uh, second place where Zoro is in fourth place just because, you know, life coach lost one of his games 3 2 and, 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 you know, yeah. Yeah, so it ended up working out in the end for him, but uh, this play from Kalento right now, throwing both Tunnel Trogs into the Knife Juggler, really concerned about the potential for Muster for Battle, and he pretty much gets rewarded, and I mean, that would have been a disaster if, you know, Shadowy could have killed one of the Tunnel Trogs, then played the Muster for Battle, basically, you know, unleash the dudes onto Kalento, and uh, solid play from Kalento, but he's still in a tough position here, you know, basically holding on to his board for dear life so he can get that damage, and the Consecration Ooh, wow! Yeah, we're talking about the differences in the uh, Acro Paladin, uh, Acro Shaman, sorry, here. And now one of them, the uh, Mac version, apparently has no bad starts versus the <laughs> non-Mac version having no bad top decks, and that's kind of just proven here. As that's going to be pretty bad for Colento. Looks like he may even be going down in this game. I mean, yeah. I mean, Shadow even able to preserve his life total uh, by not taking the 3 damage last turn, knowing that the only way he loses is if uh, Kalento picks up, you know, a Doom Hammer or something and starts taking, hitting in the face. So, uh, threw away the 1-1 the last turn to make that happen, and uh, now even picks up the Noble Sacrifice. Typically, you don't want to see Secret Trap before the Mysterious Challenger, but in this case, I mean, it's another extra meta that he can use. Uh, paired with this uh, Blessing of Kings. and going to work out pretty well for him. Probably going to uh, proc right now with his Power Mace, and he's going to get another Noble Sacrifice uh, once he plays this Mysterious Challenger. So this game looking great for Shadowy. Now, I've been more critical of Colento overall in this series, but this last play, I think, is a mistake from Shadowy. And I want to talk about that. He ha was planning to play Mysterious Challenger, and I, I assume he has the second Noble Sacrifice, because everyone runs the second mm -hmm. Noble Sacrifice. So it would be very likely that the Noble Sacrifice wouldn't get procced. I mean, Colento top taking a weapon isn't that likely. So then you're just throwing away a Noble Sacrifice. Well, I, I so, think he figures that uh, in the end he can play the second uh, Mysterious Challenger, and then it'll eventually pull it, so... Um, and he had the extra mana, so I think it was kind of okay. But in the end, does take the the game, and it's going to be two one in favor of Shadowy. Obviously, different lines of play that could have been uh, played there from him, but uh, is able to take the win. Um, unfortunately, Shaman has not been working out too well, despite doing well on the ladder, as we saw Rained and Luffy pilot it to high uh, legend ranks. Oh yeah, it just comes down to um, can you deal with the initial wave when you're facing the Mac version, and can the Shaman get a decent enough start if you're facing a non-Mac version. But to talk about the last game, what I would have liked him to do is uh, go Shredder, Noble Sacrifice, kill the uh, Rolling Tap Matic with the mm -hmm. token and the weapon, leaving the 1-1 one -one alive because the 1-1 one -one is going to attack anyway. Mm -hmm. So then you guarantee you proc the Noble Sacrifice, you kill the 4-3 uh, and you have a better chance to get reach out of the uh, out of the king. Because, I mean, stuck on the board, the... Uh, Stuff stuck on the board, the setter is much stronger than a 5-3. Right, right, right. It definitely makes sense uh, to, you know, make sure you get the value out of that. Uh, just playing Devil, Devil's Advocate here. Uh, he, Shadowy was following uh, a line of play where he didn't take any damage. Uh, the previous turn, he didn't take damage from the spider tank by using his face and said use one of his uh, tokens. And uh, just, you know, afraid of something like a top deck, you know, Doomhammer just coming out and smacking him in the face over and over again and just getting that crazy burst in that, uh, that you know, Shaman is capable of doing. But, uh, yeah, definitely either way uh, could have worked. Uh, definitely your play, pro I mean, I think he was in such a dominant position that he probably would have won anyway. But uh, as far as this true game that, goes, yeah. sorry? Absolutely true that. But you prove playing scared, that's something, mm. you know, Western pros definitely, I mean... 
uh, when, when I've been casting uh, stuff like Divinity, you definitely see you know mm. people that are facing Firebat or or facing you know life coats. Right. Maybe if, if it's you know people from the qualifier, they think like, oh. He definitely has the combo, and he has this, and he has Dr. Boom, and I have to save all of these things and play around all of these things and play really... And they just end up playing too scared and, and, and fall into a lot of traps here. Uh, but now, yeah, this is a bit rough. <laughs> yeah, the Power of the Cheddar was a very good card to get off of uh, that Death Lord. One of the best cards that in the game, one of the best, I mean, basically the best four drop, I think everyone would, would admit. And uh, you're seeing exactly why this matchup is so poor for the Mill Rogue, because, I mean, you give the Mill Rogue, or give the Temple Mage, excuse me, cards, and they're able to use them pretty effectively, as we saw with that Flame Cannon last turn. And uh, Shadowy, with nothing to do this next turn, uh, after uh, Clento makes his turn, other than to give his opponent cards, which uh, obviously cannot feel very good. Yeah, I want to go ahead and talk about the last turn. He started to uh, hesitate a bit when he was attacking with the weapon. I saw no reason to use the Deadly Poison last turn. He mm -hmm. could have just attacked with his 1-2 one, 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 uh, one, one, weapon and killed the 4-1 mana worm. I felt that that was going to be stronger. He gets a second Mad Scientist. Not too bad. I mean, this is going to almost play itself here, though, with the Colette Oracle. Has the yeah. Gets the heal bot though, which is reasonable, and mm. um, yeah, can he can get rid of uh, the flame maker here? Um, what was the emote? Do you know what the middle right one is again? Middle middle right one. Uh, I think it's, it's in the thanks. Uh, I think thanks is one of the top ones. Um, oh right 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 ones. Uh, oof. I'm a tough completely yeah. blanking on this one. I know the bottom right is threatened. The bottom left is is greetings. The top left, the top left and top right are sorry top. and things. So, uh, oh my goodness, I'm totally forgetting. Anyway, <laughs> I guess we shouldn't maybe worry well about played. that. Now. Yeah, I think it might be well played. I think yeah. wouldn't that be the middle left though? It's hard to tell. We'll have to have to look that up. Okay, sorry, we're totally forgetting which uh, which about that what is, but uh, in any case, Shadowy is in a bit of trouble here. Uh, looks like he's not going to attack into that Colette Oracle, wanting to save uh, his dagger for a blade for potentially in future turns, but uh, Clento more than happy to receive some cards. He was running low, you know, just uh, uh, thank you very much, give me some more cards, I can uh, use that with my new Flame Waker. I get the Unsealed Portal out, gets the... Uh, Ooh, wow. he gets the Murloc Synergy! Wow. <laughs> the Murloc Synergy gets, <laughs> gets the War Leader. That's absolutely insane. And uh, Shadow, you're gonna need to draw Blade Flurry right now. And He gets uh, four chances, though, to draw the Flurry, so it's, it's not impossible. But still, that won't kill the Flame Waker, and it will proc the Secret, so... Uh, yeah. You wanna looking, be Shadowy right now. Looking really bad. And not only that, but it'll draw Kalento four cards, so likely that he draws into his last Frostwood or... You know, arcane intel or arcane missiles, or even you know a fireball. So okay, does pick up the does pick up double blade for it actually. So, um, what can he can he clear. Here? Yeah. yeah, he can clear. Take he has to take two damage to do so, and most of his mana. But uh, yeah, regardless, looking pretty bad. I think though, yeah, going back to it, I still believe in Colento. I feel like he had the stronger. Um... Line up here in this this matchup. Yeah, definitely. All right, looking at chat, uh, the middle right one is oops. So uh, looks like Shadowy oops. messed up earlier in the, in the game. It seems like. Thank you very much, chat, for uh, for helping us out there. And uh, yeah, Clanto picks up Fireball. That's the problem with giving your opponents cards, <laughs> and that's going to be game for Clanto. Ties up the series two games to two, and we are going to go to a fifth game. Like we talked about, yeah, the Mill Rogue was definitely going to be the weak point of Shadowy's lineup here against Colento. I felt like the Tempo Mage was already over almost. There was almost no chance he was going to beat the Tempo Mage. I felt like he had a chance for him to beat uh, win a game with the Mill Rogue. It would most likely have to be against the uh, the Rogue or the Shaman. But this will definitely just come down to Backstab, Blade Flurry and Deadly Poison. He gets the Blade Flurry right out of the bat. And Ooh. Colento gets a... Oh, wow, he gets also the... Yeah, even gets deadly, deadly poison. poison. That's so good here. And uh, I, I don't know. I think I would, uh, I would uh, mulligan this call out Oracle as well. Try to get that Death Lord. What do you think? Yeah, I, th I agree with you completely. Uh, I think there's no chance he keeps Thanos. 
I mean, basically you want to have your cold light when you run out of cards and uh, not have it kind of dead in your hand, wondering whether you're able to play it because it might help your opponent. But uh, looks like he gets Bran for, you know, the third game in a row. Not liking to see that Bran is basically more of a finisher. Uh, to use with your Colet Oracle, maybe even to use with that, you know, heal bot to heal for 16, but not something you want to see early game as we see Kalento picks up the uh, Tunnel Trog, but just a turn too late, and we'll see if he goes for that or goes for the Totem Golem, which it would be the stronger play. I imagine it will be uh, that Totem Golem, which is uh, pretty hard for Shadowy to deal with. I mean, I guess we have to, you know, compare it. It's going to be Trog into possibly. A, uh, a power mace or a uh, uh, spider tank mm. versus just going for the for the totem gun right now. I don't I'm going for the totem gun right now. It's really hard to deal with. Now we get the oracle on top of that, so it seems pretty interesting. I think it will just come down to the mana from Colento and, <laughs> and to the add shadowy insult, draw. Yeah, yeah. To <laughs> add insult to, in to uh, injury, shadowy can't even play because of lag issues right now, uh, seemingly. So it uh, looks like he's going to reconnect to the game, and uh, okay, right. So his hero power went through, and uh, most likely just gonna have to pass here, unable to deal with this, this uh, totem golem. And that's basically why you play it, right? You're basically getting out a three mana minion on turn two, and it's so hard to deal with. And he picks up the top tech totem golem, shadowy, with his hand on his forehead. Not like this. He's probably thinking. You need to give up three cards to clear this, and. It's not the scenario you want to be in here. Wow, even Shadowy. so he's going to play the Colette Oracle and give his opponent more chances. Does pick up the Vanish though, which could be pretty useful for him. That is true, but is he going to have to just end turn here and, and look for a Vanish here? I mean, I, I would think it would be pretty horrible to try to clear any of this. I think it's, it's and ending turn here is the only realistic option. Yeah, uh, probably just going to go for that end turn and uh, hopefully get a good vantage off next turn. But we do see the uh, Doom Hammer in the hand of Kalento. So, I mean, he's not really concerned with, you know, getting his board cleared, so to speak. Uh, he has plenty of damage from the hand. And uh, this is typically why it's, you know, hard to make Mill Rogue work in these uh, circumstances. You know, question here. Um, Power Mage coming down instantly, killing the Cold Eye Oracle. Looking at six damage to the face here. And not overextending to Blade Flurry. Colento playing this really well here. We're what are we gonna be looking at here? Hmm. So Shadow is one mana off being able to do something like uh coin Colette Oracle into Prep Vanish. Although I mean that wouldn't be the best play anyway, but uh I mean he can just blade flurry this, but he takes another three damage to the face. Um, and he not... can actually, he can actually go coin called Oracle Prime Vanish, I guess. No, it's yeah. It would be I three so. plus three, right? Oh yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we look at probably Sap even. Is that kind of like Sap backstab mm. deadly here? Yeah, that could be something. I mean, you get the uh, the uh, totem golems off the board and are able to potentially deal with them in the future. But it looks like he's just gonna go for the prep. Vanish, and that's it, uh, as well as play the Deadly Poison for future turns. And, uh, I mean, it kind of makes sense. Clinto is uh, rubbing his face as well, wondering what to do against this, wondering what the best plan of action is. Uh, as we do see, Cl Shadowy has the potential to Blade Flurry Clinto in the future. So, um, yeah, kind of hard to navigate from Clinto's side as well. I mean, obviously, you don't play against Mill Rogue every day, even if you're playing ladder a lot. So going to be very difficult for both players, but I would say that Clento is in a pretty clear lead here with all that burst in hand. That is true, but things can turn around very uh, quickly here. As next time we could be seeing a, a brand Brospeed Oracle uh, draw, but still Clento has only six cards in hand, so there's some options here. Eviscerate a strong draw. Yeah, actually a lot of options here for Shadowy. Um, what if he, I mean, he could go for Brand Coin, uh, Cold Light, and he would not overdraw. Um, so it looks, but looks like he's instead wanting to go for um, a Blade. Oh, he is going for go for the Brand Cold Light Oracle. So just going to get that uh, backstab out first. Um, he wouldn't have. There's no reason to get the backstab out first. You know, it's yeah, just a sequencing error. Yeah, he wasn't going to overdraw anyway. So um, kind of interesting there, but. Uh, yeah, going to almost certainly use the Blade Flurry here. Has to take the 3 damage, unfortunately, for him. 
but he will clear the board. And uh, what a Clento pick up. He picked up a, a, a Rock Biter. Also gets the Hex. What do you think about the Hex in the Aggressive Shaman? It's pretty noteworthy, but I guess, yeah, I mean, I actually wouldn't have mind him to go for the Shadow Step here. <laughs> Maybe he would replay the Oracle. Right. Um, I mean, it makes Colento discard four cards and you go up to ten cards yourself. Yeah, no, wait, nine, card, nine cards even, yeah. Like, why not do that? Why not? Is he looking for a potentially a heal pot to do that? I mean... Yeah, maybe he feels like he needs uh, the minion combat on board to potentially deal with whatever comes out. Um, Clanto, on the other hand, uh, he has, you know, a lot of options here. Uh, I mean, he can just hit his opponent for 10 if he wants to. Um, and then from there, just try to burn him down. But that's a little bit uh, scary if your opponent has the uh, heal bot in hand. He immediately heals for 16, so it's hard to get around. I mean, I think that Clento might just respect this brand Bronzebeard and clear it. Um, and then from there, you know, just try to win afterward. Or he could just go face. Let's see what he attacks. Okay, it's going to probably go to the brand Bronzebeard and then go to the face, I believe, right? I like this. This plays around heal bot, um, which Clento may, may think that he. He has, he can get a ooh, gang up here. Does he go for the gang up? Yeah, that's pretty tough. I mean, do you want to go for the gang up on your uh, Colid Oracle to give you more options in the future? Or do you go for the gang up on a future heal bot? Uh, you can also gang up your Death Lord just to get things in the way. Though we do see that Clento has that hex in hand, which is kind of crazy. But uh, will be pretty useful to him. And it uh, looks like Shadow is going to start off with drawing some cards first before he makes a decision. Yeah, I think this will come down to the defensive cards from Shadowy, not the uh, offensive cards. He gets Deadly Poison, it's not going to be any good. We're looking at Gang Up, okay, and a Death Lord coming down here. Not too bad yet. Shadowy will need to survive, Clanto definitely on the aggression here. So, uh, Clanto looks, I mean, he has five mana, so uh, he could have lethal here. Um, in fact, no, he has guaranteed lethal, I believe. No, he doesn't, because he has to use Hex. I'm sorry, I'm going crazy. I was thinking... It's going to come, come down to the Crackle, yeah, how, how, how much he hits for the, with the Crackle. Absolutely. Yeah, he could, uh, win, he could win with just Lava Burst Crackle right now for 50-50. Um, but I was just getting confused with, you know, Hexing first and then using the Lava Burst, but I was, for some reason, not counting the 3 mana for the Hex. But, uh, yeah, he doesn't have Guaranteed Lethal, but he does have a 50-50 if he wants to go for it. I imagine he feels like he's pretty far ahead and doesn't need to go for the 50-50, though. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's possibilities of going for the Anoiter if he feels that there's a potential that he'll get killed. He doesn't. Oh, this is interesting. Yeah, going for the aggressive I kind of... play. I mean, Mill Rogue doesn't kill you by, you know, killing you normally, right? There's no actual burst. The, the burst is basically they make you draw a bunch of cards and then you um, end up just taking a bunch of fatigue games. So uh, I, I think I'm okay with him not being afraid of his for his life total. Yeah, he feels like he's ahead and he doesn't need to be taking. Uh, risks now. Said we going really aggressive, but after this, what can he do to clear? Yeah, he just wanted to clear the board there, but that's gonna be game. Uh, he has nothing to do here. I mean, he could just eviscerate the face if he wanted to, but uh, Colento, he I don't think he's overloaded at all, correct? And he can just double lava burst face. He has mm -hmm. he's way over lethal. Uh, he even he he can even double lava burst crackle, and he has four damage coming just on the board. So. That's going to be it as soon as Shadowy decides to end his turn. Uh, I guess he's just contemplating whether or not to uh, use his Eviscerate on face. But um, yeah, as, as soon as this rope burns out or Shadowy clicks the enter button, Clento will be your victor. We'll just see how much BM comes out of him. Knowing Clento, probably not a lot. Uh, he's known for very little emotion here in, in, in the EU scene. But if we look at the... Uh, series as a whole. I felt like Shadow did a good job, played well, he got two wins. Uh, oh, there's the BM. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> BM's himself gets the six damage, so there you go, Kalento is able to take the win. Uh, I wonder if the Chinese fans are more happy that, about uh, Kalento losing than, or Kalento winning than uh, Shadowy losing. That's actually kind of interesting. I want to I want to kind of see the Chinese uh, fans' reaction. This is pretty funny. But in any case, that is going to be a win for Kalento. He is one step closer to making it to the single elimination finals. And uh, Shadowy drops his first match in a major televised event. Uh, after this, we are going to be seeing Tom60229 versus Chaoshen in this really interesting group. 
And uh, just, I guess, uh, recapping that series, uh, what did you think about that? What do you think about both players' play? Colento, in my opinion, only only made, I think, one minor error. Uh, so that's really strong for a full best of f five, five game best of five. So I think Colento is pretty much on Colento level. I like his decks. I think he did, did a good job. Shadowy as well, pretty solid. I think with his light, he just had the weaker lineup. So with the lineup the Shadowy had, I think he did a good job. I think 2-3 was the best he was ever going to get because the Rogue was, was very, very unlikely to win a game. Uh, so yeah, I think this is actually almost a win for both players here. Yep, uh, in the end, good experience for Shadowy, good win for Colento. Uh, we are going to go to a break and we will see you guys after we come back. Don't You don't want to miss Tom60229 versus Chaoshin, so don't go anywhere.